welcome viewers to e patasala the course today will be your topic on projections in gis a very very important aspect how you are going to project the data how we are going to bring the data from real world to paper sheet of paper some of the details in cartography we have seen that and this is uh, meant for pg students of architecture please listen very carefully and then uh, it will be very convenient and easy for you to understand the various aspects of projection system as we have seen in the last episode the geographic coordinate system or we otherwise call it as the gcs what we will be doing here now is that what is a map and what is a globe of course map as all of you know is representation of features on the surface on two dimension a globe is that is your representation of the same in three dimension in both the cases we are bringing the features or objects on the earth surface to a scale how do you bring that so what are the various advantages and disadvantages of course obviously a map will be easy to handle because it's in two dimension whereas a globe will be relatively difficult because you'll have to carry that in a object as a slightly bigger one well coming to the other aspects of that as i was telling you in the last episode gcs geographic coordinate system please try to understand very clearly what exactly is gcs all about what gcs will be defining is your location on the earth using a three dimensional spherical surface see that is very important a three dimensional spherical surface is shown as a coordinate system x y normally or invariably people or misunderstand a gcs as a datum it is not true datum is also a part of gcs it's not a datum as such it includes a, a unit of measure as i was telling you it could be latitude longitude or xy a prime meridian and a datum see datum is part of gcs and datum is based on say spheroid datum is nothing but a reference system you use a datum as nothing but a reference system how do you reference the data a coordinate system is a reference system which represents the locations of geographic features from the imagery or any observations made from gps or the data which is obtained from say survey land survey so that's how you represent that normally a feature is referenced by its latitude and longitude because this is again an important thing we'll see that in detail now longitude and latitudes as all of you know is nothing but the angles measured from the center of the earth to the point it intersects on the globe part of the sphere as i told you all the aspects of the earth as such is considered as a spherical object rather than any other non regular object but still we call the earth as a spheroid or a geoid literally meaning for mathematical purposes you cannot use a spheroid or a geoid hence we presume that the earth is a spherical object and we make measurements from the center of the earth and the lines are joined or pointed towards the point your spherical object from the center so as i told you 0 to 359 or 360 degrees is divided in such a way the equator part of it where in which it will come from 0 to 359 degrees and all the projectiles are shot from the center of the earth till it reaches the surface of the spherical object already as you are all already aware longitudes are lines which are vertical in nature which runs from north to south and very importantly it runs on the x axis general presumption is that lat long latitude x longitude y this is what most of the people does all of a sudden somebody ask you you will say yeah yeah latitudes are x and y it's not true it's not uh, latitudes are not x 
on the x axis longitudes run on the y axis latitudes run just visualize on your own you will understand you can see here from the drawing from this central part of the earth or the center of the earth lines are drawn here and measurements are made 0 20 40 60 and as all of you know this is your x axis and this will be your y axis on the x axis longitudes run on the y axis latitudes run lat long it is y axis not x y otherwise to be precise you say long lat x comma y means long lat then it will be perfect on x axis will be measuring the longitudinal values on the y axis will be measuring the latitude values the equator the meridian or the prime meridian and the equator will be your 0 0 on your east west and the longitude will be your prime meridian from north south and you have the graticules and this is the divisions which are made now what exactly is your projected coordinate system the normal geographic coordinate system is two dimensional method of doing it it's not projected it's only coordinate system as you do in a rectangular coordinate system say 0 0 100 100 you just replace the 0 0 with latitude longitude and the 100, 100 is also obviously replaced with lot lang so we'll have the projected coordinate system what is that exactly is defined on a flat two dimensional surface that's what is a projection that is you try to project the three dimensional aspect onto a two dimension sheet of paper unlike a geographic co coordinate system it has the advantage of lengths angles and areas which are constant across two dimensions so that's what is the projected coordinate system is all about but this is not true when you are working with the geographic coordinate system because normally this planar coordinate system or geographic coordinate system unless it is projected it is used for very very small areas where there will not be any distortion or effect of your shape or the area direction of your object. Of course, a projective coordinate system is always based on a geographic coordinate system that can use a spheroid or a sphere as I just told you earth is considered as a sphere though it is a spheroid. In a projected coordinate system, the locations are identified by say x y coordinates on a grid with the origin at the center of the grid as you have seen in the case of universal transfer mercator, you use that. And each position has two values referencing to it, its central with reference to the central location it is obtained. So, one specifies the horizontal position whereas, the other specifies the vertical position. The two values are otherwise called as x coordinate and the y coordinate please remember x represent your longitude y represent your latitude and using that notation we will be getting the values uh, the coordinates of the origin will be x is equal to 0 y is equal to 0 when which nothing but you are the intersection of the equator and the prime meridian will start from there and as you see this uh, on any given uh, network uh, that is gridded network these lines are normally equally spaced the longitude or the latitudes will be equally spaced. So, one will be a vertical lines and the other one will be your horizontal lines and with the x and y axis in control we will be having the x axis values and the y values value uh, values rather and uh, the units are also consistent and equally spaced across the full range of your x and y. Horizontal lines above the origin and vertical lines to the right of the origin have the positive value. So, if we just look at this simple drawing. So, this is what is that all the lines above this horizontal line to the right will be your your positive to the left of 50 if you find out x will be lesser than 0 that is x value will be your negative and y will be your positive and similarly in this case both x and y will be your negative and in this case x will be greater than 0 that is your positive and y will be your less than. So, that is this is your plus plus that is your x value and this will be plus minus this will be minus minus and this will be plus minus. So, this is how your values will be represented on it. So, all the four quadrants are represented here. What is a map projection? What is a map projection? How do you project the data? As I was telling you right from the beginning projection is nothing but displaying the earth on two dimensional uh, map or that is on a sheet of paper. 
whether you treat that earth as a sphere or a spheroid or a geoid it is on nothing but transformation of three dimensional surface to create a flat two dimensional sheet of paper and it is now all your say mathematical transformation and that is in general called as a map projection. If you just look at this world or the globe as such this is uh, as you view the world from space and the projection is centered at 72 degrees west and 23 degrees south namely you are say your UTM uh, coordinates uh, eastern easting and the northing. If you are looking from the sun this is the way earth will appear uh, on the particular area from or the noon age time. So, what is a map projection how does it give the relationship between the objects. So, it is nothing but the spatial relation between locations on earth and their relative locations on a flat map and that is what is all projections are about and very importantly it is all mathematical calculations there is nothing odd about that it is all mathematical simple calculations. Of course, the most important aspect is that when I am transforming the data from three dimension to two dimension it will result in some distortion and that could be your scale part of it or your distance or it could be your angle. Hence, we say that no map projection or no system can be 100 percent perfect with respect to those three. Somewhere sometime the distortions will exist how do you accept it. So, the distortion as I told you could be angles, areas, directions, shapes or distances it could be one of them. So, each projection what they tend to do is that they try to have or they accept one or more projection and then create a projection system and we will we maintain the others as such. So, it all depends on your projection system selection of that particular depends on what kind of application, what kind of study and which has to be accepted which has to be uh, uh, preserved rather and which has to be distorted. As I told you very clearly in reality a spheroid is not a developable solid because in any form is something like uh, take a ball cut it into two and try to flatten that somewhere it has to represent it it has to break. So, that is what is the problem with your projection system the earth as such. So, it is not a developable solid you cannot develop it as it. So, to transform that 3 D data into 2 D we have the distortion which will be in the form of your shape, area, distance, direction and position these are the 5 effects it will have. As distortion is not available I mean unavoidable rather what we try to do is that we have to accept one or two distortion each of the projection and then create the projection as such. We say conformable projection where in which uh, we say where angles are preserved that is the local shapes are preserved other things are affected. Equal area or equivalent projection areas are projected preserved rather others are affected. Equidistance where distance is preserved between two points, but others are distorted to extent and then azimuthal projection directions from a single point location to all other locations are preserved rather. These are the types of projections we have the conformal equal area equidistant and azimuthal classification of projection what are the basis for that. Projections are classed by the global characteristics it actually preserves as I told you it could be the area it could be the distance it could be the shape. Geometric approach to construction either you are going to use the projection surface or the light source from where you are going to put the light and what effect it will have. Obviously, is not it when you are just looking at we are just trying to use the light you have the globe and you put the light you just try to move the globe the light variation there will be a lot of variation with respect to the shape of the object which is resultant from the light which will be projected on the earth surface. So, that is what is the light source and the other one is your orientation of the object. Finally, the interface of projection surface to the earth where does it interface how does it intervene with the surface you can see a very important aspects the variables which are present in a map projection what kind of that as I was just telling you with light as source we say mnemonic projection stereography projection orthography projection with projection surface as the base plane or planar projection system 
cylinder projection system or conical projection system. These are the various uh, uh, properties we get. With orientation or aspect as a criteria, it should be transverse mercator or transverse projection, oblique projection or normal projection. So, these are the various types of projections which are available and we will have to work on that particular aspect. As I was just telling you, we will have to work on say developable surfaces, which is developable, which is not developable. So, we say that uh, or based on say development surface namely cones, cylinders or planes, conical surface, a cylindrical surface or a planar surface. So, these are things which can be developed because, because as I just told you transformation is made mathematically. So, geometric shapes we consider it could be either a cone or a cylinder or a plan, plane surface. As you see that uh, developable you find uh, cylindrical or conical how cones are used or cylinders are used. So, we just try to have the surface could be as I just told you it could be a cone or a uh, cylinder and this will be the cut line. So, when I just use the earth surface as it is I use or cut the cylinder exactly here and then flip it open or I cut this uh, cone here and flip it open and this will be the shape for your cone and this will be shape for your say cylinder. So, that is what is the excellent part of your geometrical shapes which are being used to represent the earth surface. You can see here cylinder presume that the earth surface or the globe is within the cylinder just if I open it like this what will happen that is the cylinder is there the globe is there when I open the cylinder obviously the object also opens here of course you have some constraints but still that is the way normally we do. Similarly in the case of a cone we have the cone here and we put the uh, earth inside and we flip it open what will happen how will it what will be the effect so conical surface. The other method is taking a planar surface I keep it on the earth surface and we try to project the object from beneath and see what will happen. So, that is the azimuthal. First one we talk about the light as a source if light is as a source what will happen what will be the type of uh, uh, methods or what will be the types of projections one can generate. Orthographic one of the uh, very pertinent one which is a very important one orthographic projection. The projection center is at infinity you can see here from here at infinity it will be going this will be the map surface. Stereographic projection wherein which uh, we have the projection center here that is exactly opposite to, to the tangent point to the map surface. The gnomonic projection where the center is considered the center of the ellipsoid and this is where it starts and from here you project the object here the projection of the center of the ellipsoid. So, the orthographic projection stereographic projection or gnomonic projection are based on the light source. And again in the case of your uh, projection systems but as uh, it is impossible to avoid the distortion as I told you conformable projection, equal area projection, equidistance projection, azimuthal projection these are the three. But in first case shapes are preserved, second case areas are preserved, third case distance is preserved. In case of conformal projections what it does is it retains the correct angular relation in transfer from globe to map angles correct for small areas please remember that it is not that always you can have that it will be the angles uh, for small areas it will be perfect. A small scale in any direction or point but scale changes from point to point so that you have to remember otherwise it will get affected. Parallels and meridians are always crossing at right angles and large areas tend to look more uh, like they do on the globe than is true for your other projections. Examples of this conformal projections here Mercator projection and then Lambert conformal projection or conical projection. As I just told you in the case of your conformal this is what is here map part of it a conformal projection rectangle aspect here is something like a ellipsoid equivalent projection a Mercator projection as I told you in earlier divided into zones earth entire earth is divided into zones and the zonal way distance will be your 6 degrees. A conformal projection Lambert conformal conical projection as you can see that the cone is considered here the earth is put inside and it is flipped open and this is the way the earth will appear when you are using your conical projection. 
the other aspect is your equal area or equivalent area projection wherein which areas are preserved we do not bother about the direction and the distance areas are important. A map area of a given size say for example, if I just take a 3 inch circle in diameter for example, on the map that will be presented or uh, represented as same amount on the earth surface respective of where the globe or map is located that is why the equal area you do not lose the area. The, the tendency is that generally as I told you the shape or the size or the shape area or the direction will be lost here in this case area is retained as such. Maintaining equal area what we require is that the scale changes in one direction should not be offset by scale changes in the other direction. So, that is very important. Here the right angle crossing of the meridians and parallels are often lost whereas, in the previous case it was retained in this case it is lost resulting in what distortion shape will be affected, but the area will be preserved equal area. Projection coordinate system say you talk about your say map and the globe. You can see here the globe part of it and the globe is projected from here and to, to a sheet of paper that is your map a kind of an elliptical object is being projected something like a on a sheet of paper a rectangular one or a square object that is the way it does. So, 0 to 20 degrees is now projected here. So, area here of obviously you will find that A, B, C, D and E as if you just move away from the equator that is this is the equator considering this as equator area of A will be always greater than B, B will be greater than C, C will be greater than D and this will be greater than E. Because as you see here when you move away from the central part of the earth the areas also gets affected. So, that is what is your co projector coordinate system. So, an equivalent or equal area projection as I told you you can see how it is represented in this shape in this format rather. When I try to compare the conformal or your equivalent what will happen? In the case of your equivalent it shows the true size and squish and stretch shapes whereas, in the case of your conformal it preserves the true shapes and exaggerate the shape part with other details. So, you should take a decision which type of projection which where, where I am going to use it of course, we will see when and all this at a later stage this is how it will go the this is your equivalent and conformal projection. And we have the equidistant projection the third type where we depend on or we preserve the distance because many a times in when you are trying to work with the or uh, data you have to ascertain whether the distance is important or the shape is important or the area is important in this context we are going to depend on your distance part of it. Length of a straight line between two points always uh, which is represented on the great circle will be there always uniform lines to measure from it is originate at one only one place or two points. So, we use the plane surface as this plane surface is touching or it is tangent to this particular globe surface what will happen. So, we just try to have the earth grid and the features projected from sphere to a plane surface that is from this three dimension to a two dimension here. So, this is what your planar projection. So, as you see here how it is projected equidistant and the types of or uh, types are equidistant and azimuthal. Lambert azimuthal equal area projection is this the way in which this is represented you can see here how the areas are represented is your equidistant projection. So, as you, this is nothing, but uh, as you see from the top from the top of the earth surface or as I just told you you have the planar your plane and you have the earth, sur uh, earth here. So, both of them are when they are just intersecting how does it appear how you are going to see that. So, when I am seeing from the top of the earth surface what are the areas which I can see here this is the way you can see because is not it you cannot see the entire area you cannot see all the aspects because you can see only top of the globe you cannot see the other aspects this is what your equidistant projection then azimuthal projection as you know that there is always a true north and the your um, uh, I was telling the magnetic north there will be some variation. So, when you are just trying to draw a line between two points that which is depicting correctly whether it could be the great circle root or could be the azimuth. In the case of azimuth this will be the angle between the starting point of a line and the north. So, this will be there and this line can originate only at one particular point it cannot originate anywhere you just 
put a, a particular point and then you tell what will be this one. So, this will be the angle between the line and the north and then you try to project that. So, this is how it will be centered on row 1. So, this is the central point and this is where the projection is taking place and this is how the earth will appear. You can see here each of them will be different. You can see this is your equidistant and this is your azimuthal projection. So, this will be the point of origin. When you compare a plane projection, planar projection, a Lambert azimuthal equal area from the globe, this is how it is represented. You can see the distortion you see here, it is getting uh, distorted here and there. But of course, at the central point it will be perfect whereas, other places it will be incorrect. The very important aspect is your conical projection, what kind of uh, uh, method you are using. In the case of a conical projection, a globe is projected onto a cone which is then flattened that is what I was telling you. This is what is your cone and the globe is present here or it put inside and you rip it open or you open it and then flatten it. What is that is something like a cap a duance cap you know duance cap you just put it over the globe as such. Here the meridians are all straight lines all the vertical lines are all straight here angle between all meridians is identical throughout it maintains that. But unfortunately as you see here this part here this is getting narrower and narrower. So, the latitudes will get affected and the meridians are all maintained that is what your conical projection surface. This is what is your conical projection. You can see here how the cone is put into here and the light is put from here. As uh, if you just presume this to be a, a transparent sub object from the center of the earth if you are putting light whatever you see here whatever you see from this through the transparent object those which are getting reflected on to your say the conical surface that if you flatten this is how it will appear. So, this is what is your conical projection a very very interesting aspect aspect you can see here this is what I was trying to say that in this case uh, it is in the same method one area and this is a different area. You can see here how the distortions are taking place is not it. See these meridians are all ok there is no issues about that, but the latitudes are all changing the areas are changing these are all parallel to one another there is no issue about that. So, this is what is your equidistant conical projection. So, you maintain a particular distance, but you lose the distance for with respect to your latitude you can see here see as you just go away from this equator the area is getting affected the distance is maintained. Then you have a very interesting one namely the cylindrical projection the projection what we use it for in many cases one of the uh, aspects uh, which it will maintain very perfectly the cylinder globe is projected onto a cylinder which is then flattened as in the case of your cone. Normally cylinder usually fit around equator because that is where you, know, you can see this is what is the equator part because uh, this part only will be touching your cylinder from there will be opening up meridians are again uh, evenly spaced as a straight line, but as parallel varies depending upon the type of projection what we are going to use here. So, cylindrical projection as you see here again uh, the light is put here and then when you just trying to look at that just presume this will be your transparent object the light is uh, reflected and whatever you see here these are the objects are all shown here in this fashion. One relatively when you consider uh, conical cylindrical projection is presumed to have a better quality and a, a, a good uh, shape, uh, details are maintained properly you can get this. Uh, in fact, Mercator projection is all more of your cylindrical projection. This is what is your Miller's cylindrical projection a projection which is uh, done or developed by Miller's uh, you see the entire earth surface. In fact, uh, uh, entire thing is shown in one uh, the entire globe as such is shown in a rectangular object. So, this is what about your general aspects uh, in the next episode we will discuss about the light source as a location. Thank you.